Look what I bought. It's my new toy. Good morning everyone, it's Stephen here for Bland Designs and this is my weekly vlog for Monday, July the 23rd, 2018. Hope everybody had a good weekend and had a good week last week. And uh, for those of you that weren't chatting with us yesterday on Stephen and Walter Live, um, I hope you can join us soon. Um, if you don't know, we've got a few new subscribers. I have a few new subscribers on the channel and uh, if you're not aware of it, we do a live broadcast, my husband and I, every Sunday afternoon at four o'clock Eastern Standard Time and everybody's welcome to join in and you never know what we're gonna talk about. Um, so jo join us. Anyways, let's get right on to it. So finally finished the crumb qu quilt, it's behind me. Let me get off my perch here so you can have a better look at this, have some coffee and not pull my microphone too far. So there you go. Um, it was all made from scraps, uh, thus the name Crumb Quilt. I don't know if that's a generally accepted name in the quilting community or not, but I happened to see a video uh, a few weeks ago where a lady was taking all her little bits and pieces and just sewing them together whatever way they came up without much of a plan and she called it crumbs. So it's a crumb quilt. I'm pretty proud of this one. It turned out pretty good um, considering that none of the squares uh, match or anything like that. Um, they do match a little bit in color but you know I wasn't even worried about that and um, each square you probably can't see it on the video but each square has been quilted individually and uh, what I did was I created six uh, patterns. Now this isn't free motion quilting, it's the next best thing, it's walking foot quilting. So uh, you have a little bit more um, control with, your, with the machine. And I also quilted the sashing as well using my, what's becoming my signature quilting method. Um, just doing wavy lines with the walkie, walking foot. So it's not a huge quilt, but uh, it's a good size throw, I guess you'd call it, or lap quilt, something like that and it's turned out pretty nice. That's what the backing looks like. Isn't that beautiful material? I made napkins out of that material as well and I think I showed those to you. You know it doesn't matter how many times you go over a quilt you still find little pieces of thread on it. In fact I'm finding little pieces of thread everywhere in my house. I guess that's one of the um, problems with being a quilter. These stick on your clothes, they stick on your carpet, everything. My hair's not quite right, fix that. Okay, so that makes it, is that quilt nine or 10? I think that's quilt nine. I do have the uh, quilt top ready to be sandwiched uh, for quilt number 10. Um, it's a little bit more planned out. It's not a crumb quilt or one made from scraps. Well, it is sort of made from scraps, but not really. It's half square triangles and uh, I will show that to you when I get it done. Um, so anyways, um, I'm going to say a little bit more about what you saw at the very beginning of this video. We did talk about it fairly extensively, my new toy, uh, yesterday on Stephen and Walter Live. So at the risk of boring you or sounding like really addicted, and I am, um, I will mention a few things about that and in, in line with the next quilt because I'm going to do something a little different with the next quilt thanks to this machine that I have. But we'll come to that in a minute. Right now, let's check out the YouTube channel of the week. The YouTube channel of the week is Elizabeth Craft Designs. Now this is one from my vault of subscriptions that I have not gone to in a very long time. Mainly I haven't gone to this uh, particular YouTube is because it's all about die cutting and I used to do a lot of die cutting but since I have a Cricut maker and other uh, machines that will cut things for me I don't use my dies like I used to however I know there's a lot of you out there that use dies faithfully so you may be interested in this site Elizabeth Craft Designs is by the lady who designs and creates a whole bunch of really nice dies. And she has 
many, many videos showing you how to use them for scrapbooking, card making, uh, making gift ideas, things like that. It's a very informative site, and so if you are into die cutting, you might want to check this out. It's going to give you a lot of ideas and a lot of tips for using your dies correctly. So that's Elizabeth Craft Designs. Okay, so person of interest this week? Don't have any. Um, sorry, but nobody sent me anything, so we'll move on with that. Um, I'm getting a feeling that maybe person of interest isn't really something people are really that interested in. Um, so maybe I'll find something else to fill in that little slot of my program. Uh, we'll see. But do remember, you're always welcome to send me anything, anything at all about yourself, about your community, whatnot. Um, and uh, I'll be more than happy to showcase it here on my vlog. So don't be shy. All right, resources below. You have Stephen and Walter Live is below. Um, you have two episodes of The Idiot Quilter this week, one showing you my, uh, my new toy, my Janome 15,000 Horizon Embroidery Machine. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, I also have one showing um, how I organized my stash of materials. Yes, I have a stash of materials now. All quilters do. And how I, I've sort of organized them into projects uh, with their patterns and things like that. And I've got quite a few projects to do. Um, at times it almost seems overwhelming. I'm, I'm retired. I love quilting. Um, I love crafting. Why am I under such stress to get things done? Lots of time. And if there isn't lots of time, does it matter? No. Anyways, those are on there. I also have um, the link to the YouTube channel of the week below, Elizabeth Craft Designs, and a link to the book I'm about to review in a few minutes. So, let's talk about what's pissing me off this week. Nothing is really pissing me off. Well, actually, something happened late yesterday that is pissing me off, but I'll come to that in a minute. I want to talk a little bit about customer service. Okay, now I have mentioned this before, but I want to send a shout out to my favorite sewing store of all time, and that's Ultimate Sewing here in Oshawa. So if you live in the area, if you're into sewing, quilting, whatever, you need to check it out. Um, Shirley, the owner, is excellent. Uh, she's knowledgeable about her products. She's an official Janome dealer. Um, she knows everything there needs to be known as far as I'm concerned about sewing, quilts, clothing, the whole bit. Um, and she spends time with you. Why is it I start my vlog and my nose starts to run? Weird. Um, anyways, this is what I call excellent customer service and it's why I keep going back and I was there a lot last week. I don't want to tell you how much money I dropped last week. Yeah, I will tell you. Why, why, do pe why are people always afraid to mention prices and money and everything? I'm not a rich person, okay? It's going to sound like I am, all right? I, but I bought my new toy, which was my Janome. I'm going to come to that in a moment. I bought a lot of notions, threads, fabrics. She had a big, huge tent sale. She has it once a year. Um, and yeah, I spent a lot of money. In fact, I jokingly said to the ladies that work there, I guess I've paid your salary this month. Literally, I think I did. But just a second, I have to get a Kleenex. I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that, but better that I blow my nose rather than have you watch it run all over the place and grow shit. And I don't know why my nose is running. I don't have a cold. I don't think I have allergies. And I don't know. Seems when I start a vlog, that's when my nose wants to run. What is that? Anyways, what was I talking about? Get customer service. So as I said, you can't get any better help there. And not just with the owner either. All of the ladies that work in that store are all very knowledgeable and extremely helpful and friendly. I enjoy going into the store even just for the social aspect of it. Of course, mind you, I don't just get the social aspect. I'm usually there buying something. But I do. I, I, I jokingly said to the owner, you know, I've been in the store so many times this week that maybe you should just get me a cot and I'll live here. Um, and I have mentioned before that she's offered me a job a couple of times there, but 
mm, not confident enough in what I'm doing uh, to really work there. I'd be afraid I would give somebody the wrong advice or that I'd muck up cutting their fabric or whatever. Um, however, I am going to help her out uh, with her computer stuff. Um, she admits she is not very good uh, with computers and she you know, wants a little help uh, learning how to use what she has there. Um, I have a feeling that what'll end up is I might be working for her, um, you know, behind the scenes, doing, you know, her computer things like her catalog of classes and things like that. Um, the one lady that I think did a lot of that has now retired. And even she seemed to be struggling with, okay, it sounds bad, but basic computer functionality. Um, mind you, I've use computers since the first day they came out with personal computers uh, and uh, I know quite a bit about it and there's that glare on my glasses again ah, drives me nuts to twinkle in my eye let's put it that way um, so yeah I'm not pissed off at all because I think every business especially smaller businesses should have her model for dealing with customers because I think it would make the it much more enjoyable now, having said that, I have a complaint. I'm not, well, I am pissed off. I'm not pissed off with the store, nor the ladies that work there, nor the owner. Owner. This has nothing to do with them, except that I will have to go and see Shirley uh, tomorrow, Tuesday. She's not open on Sundays and Mondays. Yesterday, I was sewing away um, on my new machine, and I went to change threads and my automatic threader doesn't automatically thread. It's not getting the thread through the needle. And this is a powered one. It's a lot of machines have one you pull down the little lever and it threads. This one is not. I push a button. That's how sophisticated this machine is. It's a little thing, but I'm really kind of PO'd at that because this machine is a $14,000 machine. Mm -hmm. It's a Janome, a good name. They've been making sewing machines for over 30 years or longer. Actually, they, the Janome company, I saw a thing on YouTube actually about the history of the Janome company uh, out of Japan and they got started in the 1920s basically. So, you know, they've been around for almost 100 years. Um, they do pride themselves on good quality um, products and things like that. I tried everything to get the threader to thread and no no game. I thought maybe it's the needle. Maybe uh, uh, maybe it's bent, so I put in a new needle. I thought maybe it's the type of threads. Tried regular thread, because um, I was using embro embroidery thread. Um, nope, nothing I did. I looked in the manual. Doesn't talk about that as a problem. Went online extensively and I did find I didn't find anything that helped but I did find that a lot of people have had this problem with other Janome machines um, but especially with this one as well and they're pissed off basically they have written to the company they've gone to their dealers um, it gets fixed and a few weeks later it's busted again this makes me worried because I bought a very expensive machine. So let's just talk about, let's move away from what I'm pissed off at and let's talk about the machine. As I said, this is a Janome 15,000 Horizon. It's an embroidery machine. It does everything, believe me, except actually get up, cut your fabric and make the quilt for you. But it's $14,000, okay, it's half the price of a brand new car. Well, if you buy a cheap one like a Honda or something, um, which are not cheap, but I like them. Um, I didn't pay 14,000 for it. And I explained this all yesterday on Stephen and Walter Live, so I'm not gonna go into great detail, but basically she was having this big sale. I asked her how much she was putting that machine on. I got it for half price. I got it for $7,500, including the tax. I couldn't turn it down. There's just no way. I've had my eye on this machine ever since I got into quilting. And uh, yeah, and it is a beautiful machine. And it, I've got about the machine in the Idiot Quilter episode 20. So check that out if you want to see it. 
so I am a little ticked off that I've only had this machine since Wednesday. I haven't had the machine a week. Yes, I have put it through its pace uh, with it because I have been trying to learn everything that's on it. And so I have spent three, four days, solid days, immersing myself in the manual and how to work this machine and trying all kinds of things. But it hasn't been abused. I look after my things, especially my expensive things. And so, yeah, I'm a little pissed off at that. Again, I am not pissed off at the store, the store owner, or the ladies that work there. This is not their fault. They do not manufacture the machine. So, tomorrow, I'm going to call up Shirley, and I'm going to tell her what the problem is. And maybe she knows something, which she probably does, that I don't know. And maybe we can get the problem solved. But now I'm a little concerned that if I'm having this problem with this needle threader and other people have had this problem and a lot of them have never had it resolved, there's a lot of parts to this machine. Um, and it it's, does very fine work. So what else might go on it? Yeah, it's under warranty, but that's a pain in the butt. She'd have to, the, I'd have to take it back to Shirley and she'd have to send it out to be repaired and then I'm down without a machine for a while which might not actually be a bad thing because then I could get back into doing what my other art. But she's coming out or she gets from Janome uh, their latest serger. It's automatically threads. If you've ever used a serger and ever threaded a serger, they are a bitch to thread. There's no two ways about it. I've already put my name in for one of these machines. I told her I want one. And the sole reason I'm buying one, my 20 year old uh, serger works fine, um, but I want the new one because it automatically threads. And it's $1,500. Now, when you've just dropped 7,500 on a machine, 1,500 is just a drop in the bucket, it would seem. But now I'm leery about, you know, this is new technology. What's going to happen? with this machine. So I'll have to talk to Shirley about that and see what she f how she feels because she's getting one for herself as well. So, you know, but back to what I wasn't pissed off at, I just want to say, customer service, it's all about that in businesses. If you own a business or whatever, I hope you treat your customers like they are the most important person in your life, because they are. Uh, make them feel welcomed, make them feel like you're being honest with them and straightforward and the whole bit. And you know, you're going to get the money back in return like for that because people are going to come back. They're going to be repeat customers. And so I think Shirley should write a book and put it out on the market about customer service because she's definitely knows what she's doing with that. Okay, so... Let's talk about the Janome 15,000 just a little bit more and what I'm going to do with it on my next quilt. It's an embroidery machine. So everybody knows what embroidery machines do and this does a beautiful job. It's computerized. It's wireless. I can send things to it from my computer or from my iPad. I can actually leave the room while it's working on a really complex pattern to embroider that's going to take, you know, a couple of hours to do. I can leave the room, I can go somewhere else, and I can watch the progress on my iPad. It's kind of cool. And when I need to make a color change, the iPad or my iPhone, both, it'll work with either one, uh, will ding me to let me know, oh, go change your thread. Or if there's a problem, it'll warn me about that. But I can actually watch on my screen, on my, tel on my cell phone screen or on my iPad screen, the physical progress, it shows the stitching actually happening. It's in a diagram form, but it's showing it. So that's really cool. Um, you know, rather than standing over it, uh, and I mean, I could watch it for hours because it's fascinating to watch it do the embroidery and how it does it. But what I'm even more excited about, and this is where I come to the next quilt, quilt number 10. I am going to quilt my entire quilt using that machine. And I'm not gonna do free motion, but it's gonna look like free motion. It comes with all kinds of quilting designs built into the machine. And I have figured out how you hoop it and how, you, like, you have to move the hoop. 
around. The hoops, there's several hoops. There's five hoops that came with this in various sizes. So you're using one of the larger ones and you get it set up. And so that's your blocked area. You let it quilt and then there's a grid system. You just, when that section is finished, you move the hoop over to another section uh, next to it and away you go. And I've already tried this. Um, I haven't finished this little piece yet. That's why I'm not showing it to you, but I decided to make uh, a small table runner um, and to experiment with this. And I've, I wanted to also, you know, get the feel for using this machine for regular piecing and stuff like that. So I did a table runner and I have quilted it using the machine. And I did like a feather design, if you know what that is. And that's a design that takes a lot of practice in free motion. I know I've tried and failed miserably, but this does it. Um, and it does a wonderful job. And I even used some uh, embroidery stitches on the border of this as well. So it's done. All I have to do is I have to do the binding around it. But yeah, I'm really impressed. Um, so a full quilt, not a problem with that. Um, now, some people might think, well, you're cheating. The machine's doing it for you. Yeah, in a sense, but you want to know something? I don't think I have the patience to learn how to be a really good free motion quilter, especially on a domestic machine. Uh, long arm might be a little different, but you know, long arm machines are programmable too, the more expensive ones, and they'll just go off and do what I'm doing with this machine. So, you know, the end result is, unless you tell somebody, I don't think they're going to know that you actually had a machine uh, quilt it for you. And everybody has their preferences and their own talent. And I just don't think I will ever master free motion quilting. And I kind of want it to, and I may still try that. But um, now that I got a machine that does it, Mm, I can move on to other things. So anyways, it's a wonderful machine. Just a little pissed off about the stupid automatic threader. I mean, I can still use it. I mean, I thread it by hand. It's not that difficult um, to do that, especially I have a little tool for this um, that, you know, it just, it's basically an automatic threader, but you manually use it. But I paid big money for this. So you expect things to work and you don't expect something to go wrong with it in five days. So I'll keep you informed about that. All right, what else? Well, also speaking about it, threads. This is called Floriani thread. I think they might be Italian, I'm not sure, but they are considered one of the best embroidery threads and they come in uh, hundreds of colors and shades. Here's a few of them. That's not all I have. I mentioned this yesterday on Stephen and Walter Live, and it's also in episode 20 of The Idiot Quilter. I have 150 spools, 150 different colors of this thread. Now, this thread is extremely expensive. And I got a starter set that Shirley threw in when I bought the machine and everything, but I wanted more colors, of course. So I was in the store trying to pick out a few and I see a box set of 30. So I asked how much the box set of 30 was and they're pretty in the box. I mean, threads are, there are people who collect threads and I understand why, because they are very beautiful. Um, $200 for a box of 30. Um, and then they had a box of 120 and I'm thinking, okay, if the 30 are 200 bucks, that box has got to be close to a thousand dollars or whatever. Actually, it was 600. I said, okay, well, someday maybe, or, you know, I'll just keep buying thread as I need it or the colors that I need. Walter says, no, I think we should get it. He says, I'll buy it for you. Hello? You made a money? No. Um, he says, well, as a birthday present. You already gave me a birthday present. My birthday was a week ago. Um, kind of a thing. Well, never look a gift horse in the mouth, basically. He paid for it. I suspect that Walter's just as, as fascinated with this machine as I am, which is fine because I wouldn't mind it if he started getting into, you know, sewing a little bit more too, because we could do some projects together, things like that. 
and he's very artistic. So I'm sure whatever he would create on it is probably going to look better than what I can create on it. Yeah, well, whatever. I'm not in competition. Um, but so that was very nice of him. That was very generous of him. And uh, yeah, I love him a lot. I got thread now to last me forever. If only my automatic threader worked. Anyways, get off that topic. Um, so, what else is new? Well, I'm all about sewing, it seems, these days. But I got to do some other craft stuff. I ordered this stuff a while ago, and it finally came in. And this is for marbling paper. Now, I have used products before to marble paper, but I saw this on YouTube. I think it might have been Carolyn Doobie on her channel. And these looked really good. So... I went to my uh, to the supplier for the uh, class act the scrapbooking store that is my other second home away from home and I ordered them and they came in I haven't opened the box yet I haven't tried them this is on my list of things to do this week and I'll make a video when I do um, you know as a product review you know technique kind of thing I haven't done one of those in a while um, and so that uh, you can see how well these work now, I'm also thinking outside of the box, very funny, about not just paper. I think these might work on fabric. So, you know what I'm thinking. I could, again, design my own fabric, possibly using these paints. Speaking of, of which, I have, I have sent off my uh, designs and things to several other manufacturers of fabric. I haven't heard anything. I think I might as well just give up because my style or whatever, I guess, is just not what they're looking for. And that's fine. Um, I may make some more uh, myself uh, through Spoonflower uh, when I want it. But, you know, I tried. No cigar. I don't know. Maybe out of the blue I'll hear from one of them. Um, actually, the ones I sent notes off to, I asked uh, just how I went about to submit my designs. I didn't actually send my designs with the request. And I've only heard from one of those companies so far, and they just told me that they don't, they're just a distributor, they don't actually manufacture fabric. So, okay, great. But the other ones I've sent it off to, I haven't ha heard a word from them. So, I, I guess I'm small potatoes. And on top of it all, how do you become known in the industry? I don't know how people get discovered or whatever. Or maybe I'm just not discoverable. I don't know. So, anyways, the other thing I got was Tim Holtz's new product, the Alcohol Lift Ink, and I got a re-anchor for it. Now, I'm going to have to go back and review his videos on how to use this stuff, but essentially, this will work with your alcohol inks, and so you can stamp with them, and you can also lift them uh, off, you know, through a stencil or with a rubber stamp, things like that, and create some neat effects. You know how I love Tim Holtz products, so this is his newest. Um, so I'm going to give this a try and again I will do a video at some point in time uh, showing you how what my success is with this okay that's all that really is new this week I have a whole pile of stuff that's still in the package I think I mentioned this last week and I've got to do a blitz on those and I'm thinking of creating paper backgrounds for mixed media projects or for journals and things like that just by doing using all the products I've got sitting there in the package. Bang, just spend one day, play with it all, make all these papers, collage papers, and away we go. I'll make a video of that too for you. I really feel that I've been neglecting uh, making videos about crafting techniques. I've been all about quilting. And yeah, I have been. So I'm sorry about that. For those of you that have joined my YouTube channel, subscribe to me because you're, you want to see techniques and things and I've been not doing a lot of that lately, so I have to get back into that for you. All right, speaking of doing things, inspiration uh, for this week, I saw um, a YouTube video, and I can't remember whose it was, and they were doing making a journal. But they made a journal out of an old magazine, but actually what they did was they would take interesting pages out of the magazine put them into their journal as background, um, and then layer over top of them. Now, in one sense, this is a, a method of collage, so it's not a new idea, but I thought the end result 
was really quite interesting, very artistic. And it's sort of like if you know what an altered book is, this was actually altered magazine pages as pages in a journal. So, you know, I thought for people who the white page scares them, and that happens to me sometimes, where you look at it and go, I don't know what to do with this. It's a jumping off point. You've already got some artwork on there. Now you're just enhancing it using your own personal style. So I'm, it's on my list of things to try. I have a list of things to try that's as long as my arm and longer. Like I said, sometimes you get overwhelmed with so many things to do, you know, and so little time to do it in. But I'd rather have that than sit around twiddling my thumbs and going, I'm bored. I'm never bored. I am never bored. I can tell you that. Okay, so um, I did put the link as well to uh, this enhanced magazine. It's the one you'll find it's called um, Magazine Journal, this from that, uh, My Flip, um, or May Flip, sorry, it's May Flip. And that's, I can't think of her name. I think it might be the Crafty Hodges, but I'm not sure if that's who it is. You'll know when you go to the link. Okay, so what's in my drawers? I've got plastic in my drawers this week. Here's the video. So what's in my drawers this week? Vinyl. This is just a small amount of the vinyl that I have. Why do I have so much vinyl, you might want to know? Well, here's the story. A year and a half ago, maybe it's been two years now, the Cricut Maker came out. And the Cricut Maker is a die cutting machine, as you probably know, but it came out with uh, adaptive technology, meaning that they're developing different blades and different accessories that you can use in the machine. One of those accessories is a rotary cutter, which works really well on material. But you use the regular knife on the vinyl. The other thing was, when Cricut Maker came out, I decided to join the Cricut Access uh, membership, which costs me about $14 a month Canadian but it gives me access to a lot of images and fonts and things like that. It also gets me a discount on any products I buy directly from Cricut.com. Some of those products are vinyl. Now, if you buy vinyl at Michael's or Hobby Lobby or that kind of thing, especially Michael's here in Canada, it's very expensive. One of these little tubes, depending on what type of vinyl it is, which I'll explain in a minute, can run as much as 20 bucks for a tube. And there's not that much in a tube. Um, in fact, this one, I think, for example, it's one roll, 12 inches by 24. So really, that's not a lot of vinyl. Um, so they had some sales on, plus I got the 10%. Plus I was getting a discount from one of the codes I was using from one of the uh, YouTube channels that um, looks at Cricut products. And so it was a good deal. And they seem to be coming out every week with a good deal. Or the mystery box. And the mystery box they used to have once a month. I'm not sure if they're still going to continue it or not. They've been having troubles with the website because everybody goes on it once apparently when the mystery box comes out and it crashes their system. But from what I've heard, they are working on that. But anyways, it was a great deal as well. Um, so I got a lot of vinyl. So, I thought I would just tell you what the different kinds are. Of course, you have your standard vinyl, okay? This is for home decor or whatever you want to put it on, and it's sticky on one side. So, that's what that little symbol there is showing you. This particular tube was a sampler pack, so it's got six sheets that are 12 by 12 each, and you can see here the colors that come with it. You also notice I haven't opened it yet. You'll notice that about a lot of these I haven't opened yet. Um, you can get, um, this is metallic adhesive foil, it's called. And uh, again, this one is sticky back. So you cut it, whatever you cut out, you can just stick onto whatever you want to stick it to. Um, there's glitter vinyl. These are all glitter vinyls. And again, they are, uh, I think they're sticky back. I might be wrong about that symbol. Um, it's a problem I never know. Uh, however, and they don't really tell you 
on the package either. But I think it might be. Anyways, this is glitter vinyl. It's very nice. Again, but it can be expensive if you don't buy it from the Cricut site when it's on sale. They have holographic vinyl. These two are examples of that. Look at the sparkle in that. And by the way, the, the sparkle that you saw on the glitter, that's permanent. That does not come off. It isn't like a, a layer of, of glitter glued onto this. This is somehow incorporated right into the material. So it does not come off. Um, then they have, which is probably one of my personal favorites, but I don't use that that much, is iron-on um, vinyl. This, of course, is great for bags and fabric things. Um, I've used this probably the most out of all of these uh, vinyls. You have window cling. This came in one of the mystery boxes because, believe me, I would not have ordered orange window cling. I wouldn't have ordered window cling, period. Um, because, why? I have no purpose to use window cling, and I, quite, quite frankly, I don't like things stuck on the glass of my windows, okay? So, but this came in a mystery box, so I got some. Um, I think I tried it at, at Halloween. I cut out uh, a pumpkin or something to, clip, to hang on the door, on the glass of their front door. Then they have faux leather. Now, this is kind of neat, because this is, although this is a vinyl, type of product it does feel and look like leather and it comes in various colors and these are just a couple I have I have a little bit more of this now this is where the rotary bit sorry tongue type where the rotary blade comes in handy because it will cut this because uh, in, in a sense it's like working with material but again this is iron-on I think it's iron-on or is it mm, no it's not iron-on nope not iron on, but you can sew with it. Um, so, you know, if you're making a little pouch or something like that, this is great for that. As I said, this is just a sample of what I have. I have a basket full of these tubes. I also have uh, another spot out in my sewing room where I have a rack that's full of this as well. And I have no idea what I'm going to do with it. It's just one of those addiction things. And I think you're probably getting it after the number of what's in my drawers episodes I've done that I have a problem. Okay. My problem is I collect stuff. One is never enough. A gross lot is what you want. So there might be a problem here. Um, why don't I use vinyl? Vinyl is all the rage. People who have crickets seem to be talking all the time about vinyl this and vinyl that um i don't know i i just don't have a lot of purpose uh use for it but when i do i'm going to have a wide selection okay so once again i'm showing you my obsessions my hoarding addictive self all right events in the past week well, we got together with friends uh, for dinner. I call it the gang dinner. These are people that are good friends. Um, I know them all through teaching over the years. And so uh, we usually take turns uh, having everybody over for dinner. And uh, the couple we went to this time on Friday night for dinner, uh, it was a beautiful day, it was a beautiful night. And so we ate outside, but they have got an outdoor, oh, it's a patio, but it's a living room uh, and a kitchen and a dining room. Uh, it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And you want to know something? I didn't take any pictures and I should have to share with you because um, it was it it was phenomenal. It it was really, really nice. And eating out there, it's just the whole experience was really nice. Dinner was great and they're all good friends and we haven't seen each other for a bit. In fact, the, we haven't all been together in about a year. And the last time we were together, all of us. It was my birthday last year, my 60th. So anyways, it was really great time. Um, I always like to take them a little gift, um, something I've made. And so I took them some. Now I had made these uh, things that I gave to them a year ago because we were supposed to get together last August at another couple's place, but they were having their floors, floors redone in their house and they thought they were going to be done by then but they ran into some snag uh, with the contractors and that so they weren't and then you know how things happen. Uh, you put it on hold and next thing you know it's a year later. 
So anyways, I've had these for a while and they're kind of historical, the gifts. So what I mean by that is that was at the stage I made them coasters and the coasters are on four by four bathroom ceramic tiles, but I was doing paint pouring at the time. If you remember a year ago, those of you who have been with me for a while, you've seen the videos, um, have a whole playlist on, on my acrylic pouring when I was all into that and all about that. And I had made these coasters for them. And uh, I also put in some of my cards. Um, I think I've done this too many times because one of them said, they were already anticipating I was going to give them this. And they're going, I hope you've got cards because I'm almost out of the ones you gave me last time. Well, that's a, that's a compliment. Um, and she said too, and she says, don't worry, I only give them the per to people I know that appreciate them. Because I'd said, you know, when if you're going to give a card to somebody, if it's somebody and you've made the card, it, you know that that person you give it to appreciates the time, the effort, the thought that you put into making that card. They're just not going to look at it and go, oh, thanks very much. And when you're gone, throw it in the garbage. There are people that do that. They don't appreciate that kind of thing. So I don't give those kind of people one of my cards. I give them a dollar store card. I only give cards that I make to people that I know appreciate the effort you put into it. So that's what she was saying. She was reinforcing the thing uh, because she knows that's my philosophy about it, um, that those cards only went to people who would appreciate the workmanship that went into them. So anyways, they got those. And um, yeah, so it was a really nice evening. Um, I mentioned already about the ultimate tent uh, ultimate sewing stores tent sale and they literally had a tent out in the parking lot um, if you were looking for a, a sewing machine she had fantastic prices on all shapes and sizes of sewing machines she also had a room the classroom was filled with fabric that was five to eight dollars a meter I went late uh, mainly because I knew that place was going to be a zoo and so by then the fabric had been picked over I got a few things though but that's okay because I wasn't really looking for, I was in there for actually for a very specific reason. There was some other stuff that I needed um, on this little embroidery adventure that I'm going on right now. But I managed to find a few things and you know, I dropped another 200 bucks in there. So here you go. I'm not a rich person. I'm on a pension, okay? I don't owe anybody any money. My house is paid for, my car is paid for. I do not have anything on my credit cards, okay? I'm very conscientious about that kind of thing. I'm also a saver and I have some investments, okay? This is where my money comes from. I have a decent pension because I was a teacher. Just think what you will of that kind of thing. I know some teachers get a bad rap sometimes by other people who don't have pensions. You know, we earned them and we paid into them, okay? Um, but last week, between Walter and I, and mostly me, I dropped probably $8,500 in that store. Yeah. Do I regret it? Nope, not at all. So you might wonder where the money came from. Okay, I call it my drug money. Why do I call it my drug money? No, I am not a dealer in drugs, okay? But you know that in Canada, as of October, uh, marijuana becomes legal. And so we bought stock a year or so ago. Um, and I bought the stock in this one company. <laughs> Ironically, it's listed on the stock exchange as weed. And both of us had bought stock in that. And we didn't buy a lot. I think I ended up with about 200 shares, but I paid $2.71 a share. I sold off about 100 shares or so of it uh, a couple of times, about 50 shares here, 50 shares there. When it hit, one time it went up to about $43 a share. Walter figured, mm, this company is overvalued um, right now. And he's not sure, you know, it could drop just as easily as it goes up. And it has been dropping. Um, so anyways, I had cashed that in some time ago, but I still had about 50 shares left and it, was sort of on the move up again, had dropped way below that $43, and it was up now to about $35 a share. Walter got rid of what he had left of it, 
And I decided to do the same. Um, because basically like Walter's theory was, yeah, you can hang on to it and hope that it's going to go into the hundreds or something like that. Chances are it's not. There's a lot of competition uh, for the legal marijuana uh, market. Uh, there's just a whole list of companies in the States uh, just waiting for it to, you know, to enter into Canada with it. And there's a bunch in Canada too. So, you know, you get the competition. Chances are the stock's gonna drop. We got it at a ridiculously low price. So I made my money and more, a lot more on that. So I bought a sewing machine. I mean, it wasn't, I didn't have enough stock, sell, stock to pay for the whole thing, but three quarters of it. So that wasn't bad. So anyways, I guess what I'm saying is don't hate me. Money is a funny thing, isn't it? Uh, people don't like to talk about money, what they spend. And I never get that. You know, things cost money. We all know that. Money comes from whatever you do for a living, whatever. That's fine. Um, so I dropped $8,500 last week. Bingo. Half of that came from selling stock. All right. Um, am I comfortable? Yes. Do I owe anybody money? No. That's why I'm comfortable. Um, and we were kind of talking at this gang dinner I mentioned a few minutes ago about, you know, finances in the future and things like that and retiring and how you survive. And I said, you know, really, I was a little concerned about money when I was about to retire because you're used to a certain amount of money coming in every month. Um, but I plan for it. And that's what you have to do. If you're going to retire, you have to plan for it. You got to get rid of your big expenses first your mortgage on your house, your car payments. Make sure that you don't, you're not running a, uh, a balance on your credit cards every month. Get those out of the way. Get a grip, get control of it. You'll be much happier because the whole point of when you're retired is to have less worries, to enjoy yourself. But you do need money to survive. So if you're young, plan for it now. And the young don't. I did start planning, not for my retirement so much, month, month, so much, but more or less for future finances. And I took out a registered retirement savings uh, plan. I, you know, I saved money, socked it away because, and I still do that. I still make a point of every time I get a pension check, part of my pension check goes automatically into my savings account and that's my trip money. That's why I call my trip money account. So when we want to go to Australia or when we want to go to England or where we want to go, I have the money there because I also won't go into debt for a trip. Um, and a lot of people, a lot of people I know do that. They throw everything on a credit card and spend a year trying to pay for it when they get home. Or worst part is you're out on the trip and things always cost you more than you figure uh, when you're on a trip. And if you have to sit there and nickel and dime your trip, like, oh, I'd really like to go to this museum or I'd really like to go to this restaurant, but uh, that's a little bit more pricey than what I thought, so I won't do it. Well, that's not fun. A vacation's supposed to be fun. It should be worry-free or as worry-free as you can get it. So finances are a big thing about planning trips. So plan. I don't know. Now I know there are some people saying, oh yeah, but you don't have children. Uh, you don't have this and you know that. No, I don't. Also part of the plan. Okay. No, I don't. And I get it. But because my sister, she has children that are still like our professional students, basically. Um, and uh, she's supporting them. And, you know, she's getting up there in years. And at some point in time, her husband's going to want to retire. And I've heard people say, I can't retire at 65. I can't retire at 60, 55. I can't afford to retire. Well, when will you be able to afford to retire? And maybe when you are and you're 70 years old and you hear this all the time, you're retired for one year and you drop dead. Yeah, sad. It is. It is very sad, uh, that kind of thing. So I'm not trying to pretend that uh, I have got my worldly advice is, you know, good for everybody. No, I'm just saying how it works for me. So to bring it back to spending money, 
and knowing what the price of things are and what you spent, I'm not bragging when I tell you well, how much money I spent. I'm just giving you the reality because you know you want to know. We all want to know. We want to know what, how much someone paid for that new car. We want to know how much those home renovations cost, but we always hesitate about asking it like it's like a taboo subject. We all want to know what people make at their job. Now, I used to tell people what I made. What's the secret? You know, like, there it is. I'm sorry if I made more than you um, with it. Um, that's just the nature of the beast. I'm not bragging. I'm not telling you this to make you feel bad. And I don't instantly go, oh yeah, well, I've got this amount of money, yay. No. It's, but if somebody asks me point blank about what something costs or whatever, I tell them. There it is. You know? So, I don't know how I got onto all that, but I did. All right. Um, so... You know that on Stephen and Walter Live, we have a little segment sometimes of what's cooking. And Walter has been lately playing with his sous vide for cooking, which does an excellent job of any kind of meat. Um, but he decided to do something new with the sous vide, and that's with a blowtorch in the kitchen. So I took a little video of him basically searing his meat with a blowtorch. And that just rang in my head and set up a different vision. Anyways, watch this. Okay, so Walter has cooked a couple of steaks in the sous vide, which is over there in the corner. But now he's finishing them off. This is high tech cooking. He well, is the first using, time I've tried this. So. First time he's tried it. Where'd you see this technique? Online. Online. And so basically, when you cook in a sous vide, your meat comes out kind of gray. So you usually are supposed to sear it afterwards or uh, put it on a barbecue or whatever. But another method is the one that he's using right now, which is with a blowtorch. So here's another use for your blowtorch for cooking. And so as you can see, his meat is coming out with those seared marks. Thanks to the blowtorch. Do not recommend this with children. Well, let's see what, how it turns out. You can get something called a Sears all, but it's another hundred dollars. So I wouldn't want to try it this way. So I want to invest in getting. And what's a Sears, a Sears all? It's a thing that goes on top of the blowtorch, and it's supposed to just provide heat. Oh, you're still using a blowtorch? Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I thought I'd try this first. There you go. Industrial cooking at home. Okay. So there, you got to see Walter searing his meat. Um, what's coming up? Nothing much. We don't have any definite plans uh, for the next weekend or the next week. Um, my mom is still in the hospital. But there's been some improvement. Improvement in her attitude. She still can't walk without assistance and all that kind of thing. And they have finally got her on listed as waiting for a long-term care facility, which is good. Uh, but she's starting to read again. Um, there's been a lot of social activity in where she's uh, in the hospital. She's in a ward room, so there's like three other beds in, in the room. But these people seem to have lots of visitors. And they seem to talk to my mother and she seems to get involved with, it, with that, which is really good because that is definitely something that's been lacking for the last few years when she was living on her own. Um, so I think that's helping out. In fact, one of the ladies that was in the bed next to her who's been discharged, she lives very close to the hospital and she wants to stay in contact with my mother and uh, is going to come over and visit her while she's in there. And she's even talked about them doing things when she gets out. I'm not sure how that will work because her mobility is still a big issue, but but I think that's really nice. She made a new friend, and that's good. She needs that. Um, of course, we go over regularly, and I call her uh, every other day when I'm not over there. Um, but you know, it's good to have other people, you know, than just family. So I'm really pleased with her attitude right now. Um, I'm hoping it 
continues. I know when she does get pushed into a long-term care facility, we're going to have like right now we might be on a bit of a rise. I know we're going to go back a couple of steps because it'll be a new environment. She'll have to get used to it. But I'm hoping that will be, you know, a very short little downfall and things will pick up again with it all. So anyways, it makes me happy to see my mother in a more positive mood. And yeah, so that's about it for this week. So we'll see you on Stephen and Walter live on Saturday um, or su Sunday. I mean, sorry, Sunday. Um, we're still working on this whole thing with the video uh, transmission. Yes, we are still backwards. Um, people were bringing that up uh, on the live broadcast. And I've, I've explained this before. We know we are backwards. It's because we're using the camera, the selfie part of the iPad for that but for some reason when you go live on YouTube it didn't used to do this but it doesn't switch it around to the way it should be right now I am you are seeing me the way you should see me the reason being is once I put this up uh, on YouTube whatever YouTube does when it processes it they'll flip it around to the right way um, Right now, as I look into the camera, uh, it's a little bit backwards. Well, it's actually, it's not backwards. I'm seeing it the way you will see it, um, but you will see it the right way. So I don't know if that made any sense. Anyways, it's not my fault. And I've seen other people with the same problem, uh, like Ken's Creations, Melanie Lane. They all have the same problem. Um, I haven't heard them discuss it though, so I'm not sure if they even realize that they have this problem or they've just decided not to bother talking about it. Um, it's not that big of a problem unless you hold up something that has writing on it and then it's going to come out backwards, you know, in, you know, and that's a bit of an annoyance. But it's a YouTube problem and YouTube isn't mentioning it, not talking about it. I'm surprised there hasn't been a lot of chatter about this from other people who create videos on YouTube and do live. I don't get it, but it's not just me and it isn't me, but we're still working on the technology. So again, people asked on Stephen and Walter Live about Walter and I doing something together and we, we would like, you know, craft something and we would love to do that, but I wanna do it live because I think it could be a lot of fun to watch but it means that I need to have a couple of cameras and I have a couple of cameras. That's not the problem because, you know, so you can see her face and you see her hands and I can switch before back and forth through them to, to each camera. But that's where the problem lies. I haven't been able to find a switcher program that will work. Oh, I found one that's excellent. It works with iPads and iPhones and the whole bit. And we downloaded the, this app for seven, day, seven days trial and it, it works brilliantly. But the problem is it has a hefty price take and you can't just buy it outright, like say for a couple of hundred bucks. Because actually if I could buy it for a couple of hundred bucks, I would. No, it's a monthly subscription at about 50 bucks Canadian. Holy crap. That's over $600 Canadian dollars a year. Uh, no, no, that's that's way too expensive for something that, you know, I wouldn't be using it every day either. So I'm still on the hunt. If anybody knows of a program that will allow you to switch between uh, cams or between, you know, your iPad and your iPhone or whatever, that's reasonably priced. Um, that is a standalone program. What I mean by that is I can download it, put it on my equipment and away we go then please 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 let me know write a comment below send me an email whatever i'll be in debt to you for the rest of my life because so far i haven't been able to do this so i'm still working on the problem and uh yeah we we're going to do stephen and walter live with the gimbal that didn't work out because well, it's a long story and I won't get into it right now because this video is long enough. But anyways, just let you know, we are working on the technology so we can bring you live broadcasts that are better. Okay, so that's all for me from today and I hope you have a good week 
and we'll talk to you later. Bye bye for now. Hi, I'm back. Guess what I forgot to do? Book of the week. Okay, it's listed in the notes below, and I'll just do this very quickly uh, with you. The book of us is a book I've had for many, many years because there was a trend in scrapbooking many years ago, and it may still be happening, where people were creating scrapbooks about themselves, about their life. Uh, the idea is scrapbookers often do uh, scrapbooks about everybody else and not themselves. So this lady, Angie Patterson, Peter Peterson, Peterson, came out with a couple of books about how to go about doing those kind of scrapbooks. And one of them is this book, and it's kind of unique because it's called The Book of Us, and it's about your relationships. And so this shows you different ways to set up pages, um, prompts, things to write about, topics, and things like that, uh, that you can do. And it could be about you and your, your spouse, it could be about you and your children, it could be you and other members of your family, that kind of thing. Um, I did start a scrapbook like this. I did do, actually I did a couple of scrapbooks that are really just about me. Um, and so in a sense, it's like your memoirs. And you wanna know something? Just thought about this right now. I should go back and revisit those because I haven't looked at those in a long, long time. And yeah, I should probably update it, add a few things to it. But anyways, this is a really good book. And the other book, um, All About You, I think it's called or something like that. But if you plug in her name into like Amazon as an author, you'll find the other books. And they are very, very good uh, for this kind of thing. Now, expense-wise, well, here's the bargain, bargain of the week. When I bought this book, originally it was $32.99 Canadian, okay? I went on Amazon.ca, and you can pick this book up now for $7.77 Canadian on amazon.ca. I'm not sure if it's on amazon.com or not. Um, probably is. So it's a good book and it's a cheap book right now. So sorry that I had to put this at the end of uh, today's video. Um, actually, what I'll do is I'll put this in another spot. And so, oh, I don't know what it did. It'll be in there somewhere. Okay. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.